I love seeing you in person, Gary, but low key, I like doing the show this way because then we don't have to wear any clothes. Do not ask me to stand up. And conversely, I won't ask you to stand up. I would not. I'll- Although there's a lot of people in the comments that would probably really want me to ask you to stand <laughs> up. <laughs> you got a lot of fans, Elle. You got a lot of fans. She's taken people. No. These are uh, <laughs> these are not these are like sweatpants and not like cute, like adorable ones, like Livy Dunn yeah. sweatpants. These are like you paint in them. Yeah. Or you wear those them sweatpants have seen them. some stuff. Yeah, they've, they've been through some times. They've seen some. Yeah. Maybe literally. Well, honestly, listen, I had the stomach flu as quick as possible. I also love the evolution or maybe the de-evolution of sweatpants that were first created to like, hey, these are the new workout pants. This is what you will go to literally sweat in. And now they are the complete opposite. You want me to work out in my nice sweats? You're crazy. You're crazy. Since we last met Gary Streisky, Trevor Lawrence becomes another of the snake bit quarterbacks, ma'am. Yo, if you're a quarterback right now, you got to bubble wrap yourself. Facts. We're going to have potentially 12 backup quarterbacks starting on Oof. Sunday. We've had over 50 quarterbacks start under center in a game this season in the NFL. It's been nuts. And Trevor Lawrence sprains his ankle. And we're watching this happen in real time for the Jaguars. And I kept thinking, why is this man not on a cart? Like at first it was like, okay. I mean, of course, I was devastated for the Jaguars fan base, but I was like, okay, they get him off the field and like, whatever. Then they show him like a few minutes later, just down this long tunnel, these poor trainers. I mean, Trevor Lawrence is a big man. He's not a small guy. Dude's a load. He's like, he's swallowing them and they're just trudging down this tunnel. Yeah. Our guy, Jeremy Fowler had a great tweet. He said, you know, they're in Florida with all the golf carts there. You couldn't find one for Trevor Lawrence. And finally, the Gary one state Streisky, with no shortage of golf carts. Correct. And finally, we get an update on like what actually happened. And Trevor Lawrence like took full responsibility. We talked about getting a cart, and I was going to get a cart, and then I'm standing there, and you know, I'm I'm already on the sideline at that point. The tunnel's right there. I just wanted to get off the field, get out of there. I didn't know what was going on with my ankle. So there you go, problem solved. He thought he could just leg it out. He thought he could tough it out. He could cowboy up. Has that ever happened to you? Because I feel like that is definitely a man thing. It's like sort of yeah. like a. Just yeah. dust it off, dust it off, and then you sort of walk through a fracture. It's like uh, you see something off in the distance. That's not that far. I could, de- I could definitely hit that with a rock. Yeah. Like I could, I could definitely do that. Or from afar, you see a basketball rim, and you're like, I don't think that's ten feet. Matter of fact, me and Randy just did this the other day on campus. We went to go film a bit right outside of the screening area where we all collect for Sports Center, and uh, you know, there's exit signs, the lit exit signs on the ceiling. And I'm like, dude, you can't touch that. You can't. It looks like it was 20 feet in the air. And Randy's six four. He's like, I could touch that. He touched it with ease. Ah. So everything in our daily life is a competition. I think it's funny too how Trevor Lawrence also had the realization that even regular pedestrians have. Like, yeah, no, I definitely, I definitely overestimated. He was like, I saw the hallway and it didn't look that long. But then I got in the hallway and I was like, damn, I regret this. The, the thing I was thinking was like, bro, you walk that hallway every single week. Right. How do you know like you should know, it? you should know how long that, you should know how long that hallway is, but a high ankle sprain will make, will make babies out of all of us. So it's the most I've ever related to a professional athlete. Yeah. It's a, it's a tough, uh, it's a tough injury because it's not something that you can, to your point, just like leg out, like you can't tough it out. It's not like a pain tolerance thing. It's not get a couple shots, wrap it real tight. Um, it can be really sensitive. Now they're still not even ruling him out technically for Sunday. By the time we meet again, we yes. will have, you know, seen whether we're going to have another backup playing in the NFL. Um, but man, that's tough for the a Jaguars team that sort of finally felt like they were figuring it out. And because everybody else in the AFC is just kind of meh right now including the Chiefs, it, the Jaguars were sort of streaking towards the one seed in the AFC. Correct. Like, what a great story. And then, of course, bam, Trevor Lawrence is out. And I'm starting to wonder, Gary, okay? This is just a theory that I came up with. You're about to put some stuff in the universe, and I don't know if I like it. Well, I'm just, I just got to thinking. And, well, as we all know, that's very dangerous. But 
<laughs> it, it begs the question, is the 2021 oh. quarterback class cursed? The answer is yes. Wherever they are, they need to go get to Whole Foods and get themselves some sage or whatever you have to do to cleanse a palate, get the spirits out. Yeah. And just do something. It's, yeah. it's too late for some, Trey Lance. Yeah. Okay, it's, it's I think you just described an exorcism, which you can't just do with sage, but alas, yes, Gary, 100%. Well, you can exercise possible demons, bad, <laughs> bad, bad vibes around you. I just purchased, it's true. I just purchased a home yeah. where, a sad story, uh, the previous owner did pass away in it. Okay. So when my mom comes up here, we're doing that doing that whole thing. Oh yeah, you gotta say, you gotta get all the bad juju out. I sage every one of my homes 100%, yeah. Okay, correct. Like, yeah. all the all the furniture is still there as well, and it's staying there. Some of it's gonna be removed, but I know once I tell my mom the origin story, she's gonna be like, everybody sit down and pray. And I feel like that's what we have to do with this 2021 draft, quarterback draft class. A seance or something? Specifically. Or a, oh, a prayer circle. Correct, something, okay. hey, some, something. They need some help. <laughs> so let's give the, the people that are listening right now some help that are going, okay, well, I don't remember the 2021 draft class off the top of my head. So let's just run down um, some of the names for you, okay? Um, Trevor Lawrence. First overall pick, Trevor Lawrence. And listen, an injury is an injury. The production has been there. He's a leader of the team. So I, I'm less concerned. I'm less concerned yeah. about that. We're good there, okay? Trevor Lawrence, one for one. We're doing well. Here we go. About to fall off a cliff. So we're doing well so far. Trevor Lawrence, number one pick. We're good, right? Okay. Number two to the Jets, Zach Wilson. Which right now, L, I feel for Zach Wilson, and I don't think that he should have come. They're playing such a yo-yo game with that kid in New York. Now they're really he's toying starter. with his emotions. They really are. They really are. They're they're doing like they keep friend zoning him, and then. Calling him late night and being like, actually, you up? Like, and they're really, yeah, they're really toying with his emotions quite a bit, actually. I'm actually starting to feel bad for Zach Wilson as well. Not so much before. I don't feel bad. Like, you couldn't cut it. It's okay. You are not the first, nor will you be the last to not be able to cut it, right? Like, the draft evaluation process is not an exact science. And, man, the Jets whiffed considerably, especially considering that they bailed after two seasons of what they saw. But like at this point, you guys stop. Like this is, you, you know, you 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 made the man third string, and then you realized what we all already knew, which is that nobody that you have on that roster, aside from Aaron Rodgers, isn't any good. So stop doing this to this kid. This season is a wash. Now that we have confirmed that Aaron Rodgers ain't coming back unless you're going to be in it, and you ain't going to be in it. Stop messing with this kid. Yeah, they're toying with him. They they're losers. They're. Their losers are five straight, and I, as recently as last week, was on the whole, hey, if they can string together a couple of wins behind that defense, Aaron Rodgers has um, a little bit of incentive to maybe rush, not rush back, but push back the uh, the expedited nature of his rehab to maybe come back for the playoffs. But they've lost five straight. They're try they're, they signed to Trevor Simeon. Broncos legend! Like, start that guy. You've already benched Zach Wilson and sent him – through head games like a mind pretzel start somebody else what are you playing for like why are you, why do you keep doing this to this kid so like his reservations man i completely i completely understand him yes now i'm a little bit concerned that for a guy who is going to attempt to resurrect his career somewhere else that you would admit that there's some reservations right about you starting i mean ultimately you need as many opportunities as you can to show some other team you know what's not happening there anymore Right. But I imagine like this is your chance to get your revenge body. Like you're still at this team. You can still use their facilities. You can still like, you know, get your personal gains in and show someone else that it's the Jets. It's not you, you know, and and maybe potentially in this season without the horrible bad taste in and everybody's mouth that they've got right now when it comes to Zach Wilson's play this season. Um, so I'm a little concerned about him, like saying that he, you know, has reservations about starting, uh, but you know, ultimately nobody imagined this season would be an interesting season for the jets. And they somehow through a series of misfortunes and luck, were still relevant to this conversation, even as of two weeks ago. Right. Which I think after what happened to Aaron Rodgers, nobody assumed that. I mean, we thought it was done. 
And so they kept them relevant enough to be interesting into December. That's a win. Move on. Your season's done. Okay, so in continuing the curse of the 2021 quarterback draft class, okay, we've got Trevor Lawrence. We're good with Trevor. Then it goes to Zach Wilson. Yeah. Okay, number three, Trey Lance to the Niners. I mean, this is like the Rusne Castillo of NFL draft picks. And that is just, that's a super niche audience for the Red Sox. Guy was from Cuba. Red Sox handed him $72 million. We never saw or heard from him again. Trey Lance, third overall pick, played 10 collegiate games at North Dakota, North Dakota State, and just like cashed in. The 49ers sold the house for this guy and then gave up on him. Yeah, everything. They they mortgaged their future on it. Uh, and somehow are still doing really well without them. They're fine. They're just fine. They're the epitome of the team that keeps like failing forward. It's like they made a huge blunder, uh, but they were saved because while you can make a huge blunder at the top, they made a significant move at the bottom in getting Brock Purdy. John Lynch. John Shanahan. Lynch. Sh- this- Shanahan like, yeah, we... We put this thing together for sure. We should get all the, and obviously they, they do get credit for signing some guys, keeping some guys, but man, you damn near bankrupt the 49ers with selling what you sold to get Trey Lance. But all of that gets evened out with, of course, Brock Purdy, you know, making minimum wage in San Francisco. Exactly. Uh, how about Justin Fields after Trey Lance? Right. And again, like we don't know if Justin Fields, you know, I think he has what it takes to be a starter in the NFL, especially based on some of the names we see start in the NFL, but it just doesn't appear that it's going to work in Chicago. But again, we're talking about at this point, one solidified quarterback out of what was supposed to be the next restock of great quarterbacks. Like all we kept talking about ahead of that draft class was like, this is finally going to replenish the coffers. Like we need to replace these legends. And this is the draft class that we'll talk about years from now among some of the greatest of all time, among the production and the franchises that were, you know, benefiting from this class. And it's just, we got one. And then you get to Mac Jones, New England, which has been, probably the worst out of all of these. I mean, God, like, honestly, Trey Lance isn't even a starter and Mac Jones somehow still feels like a more pitiful situation. <laughs> Zach Wilson sees Mac Jones and he's like, thank God I'm not that guy. Correct. <laughs> like Mac Jones has been benched four times this year. And I, and Zach Wilson has been benched a handful of times too, but at least, at least there's a little bit more confusion in the higher ups with the jets where it's not all necessarily on Zach Wilson, but like nobody's taking accountability in new England. And they're just like, yo, screw this guy. And they, they actually spent the first round pick on him and bill Belichick never does that with the Patriots. So, you know, he's going to hang on for a little bit because he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to admit that that was bad, but what are they going to do in new England? That's it's, it's, it's ugly. It's going to be the most interesting, I think, storyline in the offseason um, is what happens to the Patriots because, man, this thing fell off a cliff so quick. I mean, honestly, I was thinking about this the other day. What are the storylines or the players this year who have had a bigger rise and fall from grace than Josh Dobbs? Right. I mean, this dude was the header for the NFL and their bio said in Dobbs, we trust. And uh, (laughs) and the Vikings right now are literally at the point where they're like, we're just settling. Like We don't want to start Josh Dobbs, but we have to. The turnovers have been a significant issue. But I think when you talk about teams and great organizations and dynasties that fell off a cliff in the way that they did, the Patriots, man, I mean, it's just. It all devolved so quickly in three years. Hey, yo, Max Kellerman was right about the cliff. He just didn't have the characters correct. Correct. <laughs> he didn't have the timeline or the characters correct whatsoever. Correct. So yeah, so that's the that's the 2021 draft class. I mean, listen, it's not good, man. It's not good. And and when you think about like the best draft classes. And I'm not going to do the whole, like, listen, here's what I don't like. I don't like when people who are our age, you know, talk about the 1963 draft class, unless of course they're historians. I didn't watch that draft class and I don't know them. So don't get mad at me. (laughs) Don't get mad at me if I, you know, if we fail to mention grandpa's favorite draft class, because he used to tell you about it. I'm just talking about draft classes from quarterbacks that I know that I remember 
um, that I watched at some point in my life play live football. And I think, do we, can we agree that 1983 is the greatest? Elway, Hall yeah, of Famer. Man. Marino, Kelly. Hall of Famer. Come on. Hall of Famer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, I mean, I mean, that was pretty damn good. And I know that obviously that has a special place in your heart, uh, thanks to what John Elway did for you Yo, in 1997 Yo. and then 1998. And then he rode off into the sunset as a back-to-back Super Bowl champ. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty damn good class. Uh, Marino made it to a Super Bowl in just his second season as a professional quarterback and then never made it back again. Yeah. That's sad. Jim Kelly went to four straight, never won. Also sad. So while that quarterback draft class is fantastic, L, there might be one a little bit more recent that's a little bit better that had a little bit more spread out success. You say what to 2004? Yeah. Three? 2004? Was it 2002? Talking about Eli? Oh, 2004. Is that Eli? Eli Manning. Ben Roethlisberger. Uh huh. Who else was in it? Philip Rivers and Matt Schaub. (laughs) He could feel the whole football team. Okay, yeah. well, ni- okay, 1983 is better. Okay, 1983 is okay. 1983 is better. They got they got more Hall of Famers. They've got a few but, Hoffers. No, but you but know what? Oh, four has more touchdowns. Well, listen, you know, you've got uh, for sure Hall of Famer and Ben Roethlisberger in that class. You know, mm-hmm. a probably Hall of Famer and Eli Manning. Philip won't get in, but he'll definitely be a guy that will go down as one of the better quarterbacks that played. And Matt Schaub was a, a nice, you know, lifelong backup, but he made a great career. He had a great career as a backup. Here's no. A- Matt Schaub, I was in um I was in I was in uh I was in Houston when Matt Schaub there was there mm-hmm. and he and Andre Johnson were like the deadliest duo for like a quick stretch of years yeah. down there Handful. in Houston. You know, listen, perennial first round playoff exits. Yeah. But they could sling it. Yeah. They they, they were slinging it down there in Houston. Then they traded him famously to Atlanta, who, you know, had a quarterback by the name of Mike Vick. Um, but he's had a great, you know, he's had a great, he's had a great run as a backup, but do you want to know a sneaky, really good quarterback class 2012, because you've got Andrew Luck, right? Who was very good until he retired. Russell Wilson, RG three, you know, the career wasn't super long, but you know, memorable Yeah. Ryan Tannehill. Talking about sustainability, right? Nick yep. Foles, Super Bowl champ. Oh. Kirk oh. Cousins. Oh. Right? Exactly. Third and fourth round pick. So, like, when you talk about, like, sustainability or at least, like, you know, some measure of success, 2012 is coming in kind of hot, dude. Yeah, 2012 is a it's a good class, but that is also the class. You can label that as the, the class of unseen potential in yeah. Andrew Luck retiring too early yeah uh robert griffin the third his injury that just caught up to him even though now he's all over our airs being like yo teams have been hitting me up i'm ready to play i can still run put me in coach. i can st- i can still huck it yeah um 2012 that's a good class right i think that's a pretty good that's a pretty good uh quarterback class right there wait, honestly who, they've got uh, as many else? they've got as many super bowl rings as that 1983 class does yeah right? so wait who who was the other one it was uh Oh, Russell Wilson. Russell, Russell Wilson. Wilson. He's got oh, yeah. he's got you a quarter. He's got you a Super Bowl. Nick Foles has got you a Super Bowl. Damn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So show hey now, you're an all star and also the most coveted prize in MLB history. Everybody wants a piece of Otani, and his free agency was supposed to be just the creme de la creme for MLB's hot stove season. We were supposed to be talking about baseball all fall and winter long. Mm-hmm. Otani mm-hmm. watch. Where is he going? Who's he talking to? Mm-hmm. Let's see him getting on jets. Let's see him at restaurants getting schmooze. Let's do this thing. And instead, Shohei, who is incredibly private, has decided that he wants to go in a shroud of secrecy. I mean, in fact, it was reported by Jeff Passan, Gary. If anybody lets it leak that you even met with me, I'll disqualify your ass. That's grounds for disqualification. Don't play with me. You better not whisper my name. Don't talk about me, okay? You're my little secret, and that's how we should keep it. We should never let them know. 
Shout out to Escape. I knew that was a lyric. That sounded too put together. Yeah, I know it was. Yeah, yeah, that was good. And because of that, the baseball writers are kind of hot. They're kind of not happy. The media, the baseball media is not happy. They're like, yo, what's going on? Um, our colleague, Love Buster Only, has an article up right now on ESPN.com just talking about why this is a disservice, all of this mystery and all that is a disservice to baseball and what could have been an amazing free agency. And it sort of highlights what could have been. And J.J. Watt, famous future Hall of Fame NFL player. Yeah. Teammates with to- Matt Schaub down there in Houston. There you go. They were homies. Um, he took some issue with how the media is treating Shohei's secrecy and his approach to free agency by basically, you know, tweeting that the media gets mad at you if you make it a big show, i.e. LeBron and the decision, Mm -hmm. and then also mad at you if you decide to keep it private and to yourself. And I think I have like a theory on, I, I get J.J. Watt's like assessment, but I think I have a theory why the writers are so upset. And this is not me speaking to any of the writers or anyone in baseball. This is literally me just doing like some junk psychology. Yes. It's my favorite psychology. If you love baseball, Gary, all you've ever heard about is Babe Ruth, right? Like from the time you were young, like he is weaved in the fabric of baseball, what it was like to have watched him. And you're hearing all these secondhand accounts, what it was like to be at a game, just all of the buzz around him and what it was like, the crack of the bat when he hit a home run or just like all of this, it's all lore and legacy and all of these things, right? I mean, you grew up with it. I definitely grew up with it. Mm Mm-hmm. And I think these baseball writers, to some level, felt like they finally had their Babe Ruth. Like they had their person that was transformational, that they got to witness, that one day they would get to chronicle and share stories with their grandchildren about the time, you know, that they covered Shohei Otani and what he was like. And, you know, Babe Ruthian, it's now Otanian. And like, I don't, I think maybe they felt like this was their golden goose. He's so good. He's so handsome. He's just all of the marketing wet dreams you could think about. Oh. Oh. I think you can say that on, maybe not. Just put the duck over my mouth, whatever. Quack. And now they got a man who, by all accounts, is a private man who really enjoys doing his job, but also then enjoys retreating. And it is driving them crazy because they want a Hollywood star who is embracing the Hollywood aspect. They want someone who wants to include the public into the peak of their life. You know, they want an incredibly marketable guy who does a wink and the nod to the media. Like they are, they're desperate for that because this is the kind of player that you write about for generations. This is their Babe Ruth, Gary, and they want him so bad to lean into that. They want Joe DiMaggio, you know? They want him dating Marilyn Monroe on Red Carpet. They want Carpet. Shohei with Taylor Swift. <laughs> they, <laughs> they want, want they, Shohei they with Taylor Swift. They, they want that. Well, they listen, want you, her at stadiums. You speak of the Hollywood story and the Hollywood ending. It ain't going to happen in Hollywood because Dave Roberts was like, yeah, we met with him. So what? <laughs> and that, and according to Otani's camp, that is grounds for immediate termination, which would out. be hilarious if the Dodgers uh, called his bluff on that and he ended up staying West Coast and he just traded L.A. teams and ended up with the Dodgers. And there's a half dozen teams that are in the mix, but I think just by way of them writing and speaking of and talking about, and I was watching Sports Center with Passing last night, them talking about his media blackout in and of itself is giving them fodder and giving them more levels to this supposed lore that Shohei Otani continues to write. It's not like this guy's going into free agency for the last contract of his professional playing career. He's 29 years young, right? He's going to sign because baseball does it. It's going to be a 10-year deal that takes him to 39 or 40 years old. Crazy. Making $50 million a year, 50, 40 years C- old. Correct. Something like that. Or maybe... He gets a smaller deal, and this is, you know, his penultimate free agency entrance because he's been with the Angels for six years. But again, I think this is just another one of the the, the chapters, I guess, in this whole 
Shohei Otani is our Babe Ruth, and they're going to look back in a half dozen years when he goes to free agency again, potentially. I don't know what deal he's going to get and be like, remember the time six years ago where everything about Shohei was shrouded in darkness and mystery, and we couldn't even find out the name of his dog that was sitting in his lap because Otani's camp said, no, you shouldn't be privy to the name of Shohei Otani's dog. We spent the last 10 minutes talking about Shohei saying absolutely nothing. Yeah. The riders are fine. But to J.J. Watt, listen, man, you're one of us now, all right? So you're either with us and our tactics and our ways of expressing either ire, disdain, or praise, or you're against us. Get off that CBS desk. (laughs) I don't mean that, but... I kind of mean that. Yeah, we have to have stuff to talk about, JJ. Yeah, the the media it, that always kills me now is like when people are like the media. I'm like, you are a member of the media, correct? Which is I, why it's unfair to make us a monolith, right? I think it's so funny. Uh, I had this story, and I wish I had his contact information. Uh, but Shane Victorino, the flying Hawaiian, you're familiar with him. Uh, this was on his the tail end of his uh, well playing career, really. And he was with the Red Sox, and he was always a talkative guy if you caught him in the right mood. So one of the days, you know, we were having a great conversation. I was like, damn, Shane, like after this, you have a lot to say. Like, are you going to you gonna like join the media? And like he completely turned on me. He's like, F no, I'm not going to be like one of you clowns. And then he retired. Sure enough, this joker was on, I don't know if it was Fox or MLB Network's postseason coverage, just not but a year after he retired. And I was like... You son of a! I wish yeah. I had your number, you clown. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, they always, they, they, they always, they always want to be part of the media once they retire, unless you're like Rick Porcello or something, and then you just fall off the face of the earth. But yeah, who's the clown, Shane? Every time, the only person I've seen that was like really honest about that, uh, as at Red Sox spring training, and Pedro Martinez who was coming off his first year having done media, looked at all of us at one of the first scrums, you know, sort of of uh, of spring training and was like, I am so sorry. I'm so sorry for how hard <laughs> I was on y'all. He's like, this job is not easy. He was like, I am real. I have such a great appreciation for what you do now. And I am really sorry. I appreciated that. We were all laughing. Man, like, yeah, yeah, see, man. Pedro's the man. That dude, that dude gets it. He's the man and one of us. MLB Network guy, one of us, one One of of us. The Heisman, the Heisman uh, group is about to get one of us. Yep. One of us, because we will add to that list on Saturday. And your finalists are Gary. We have, I think the current betting favorite, according to ESPN Bet, don't quote me, uh, is Jaden Daniels. Yeah, Jaden Daniels of LSU. You've got Michael Penix Jr., quarterback out of Washington. You got Bo Nix, quarterback out of Oregon. Been in college 18 years. And then the best offensive weapon available. And you've got Marvin Harrison Jr., wide receiver from Ohio State. I don't know why I just got so country. Yeah, I know. Did you think he went to LSU? That was definitely that was definitely a that was definitely a Brian Kelly family my family oh gosh, family um this hall of, hall of famer for taking the l by the way he's been on the, the most yeah oh, the most oh is repeat, that right yeah he's the most repeat offender yep he's the clubhouse leader he is he's the clubhouse leader right now it's awesome Love that about him. the dude stays winning even though his team lost three games this season in the regular season uh finished third in their conference uh in their division rather and yet still have the odds on favorite for the Heisman. I think I feel a certain type of way about that, but before I express that, I understand there's precedent set. Robert Griffin, most recently, with that Baylor team. Um, but I I don't think that we should just blow by the fact that Michael Penix Jr. led an undefeated Washington team through the Pac-12, which was a gauntlet this year, beat the other who was up to recently the Heisman odds-on favorite in Bo Nix, not once, but twice, nice. and has them playing in a CFP semifinal. And because of the he- because Heisman voting takes place after conference championships, I think he further solidified his case as, if I had a vote, I don't, uh, I would have voted for Penix Jr. Yeah, I think that um, getting that extra game, man, is always really significant. You know, it's just the most recent thing in people's minds. Um, so, you know, 
I think that the favorite right now is Jaden Daniels. And listen, the idea that he is even in the conversation on a three loss LSU team should tell you how significant he was to that team. I mean, he, nobody was more important or integral to their team's opportunity to win than Jaden Daniels was. So while they lost three games, they won all the other ones because of him. 50 total touchdowns, uh, over 1300 yards rushing over 3,500 yards passing. Um, I think so. Yes. I'm not saying that any of those metrics aren't worthy of being the most outstanding player. And that's of course what the Heisman is, but I just can't go past the fact that Penix Jr. Had an extra game performed yet again on the biggest stage. Um, and continues to show out, ball out. I think they're going to win the CFP, uh, their semi. I think Alabama's going to win the whole damn thing. But anyway, we'll find out Saturday night, L. Yeah, and you'll probably talk to one of them on Saturday, right? Because I remember that I used to do the show that you and Randy Scott do, that Saturday morning show, and that Saturday morning of the Heisman ceremony, they usually join Sports Center. You get to chat with them. It's going to be lit, and I'm glad that you and Nagandi actually got Penix Jr. yesterday on Sports Center. So I'm like, all right, cool. Let me make sure I listen to this interview. So I can find some opportunities to have fun. Uh, so me and Randy are taking a different approach on Saturday for the viewing audience. If you guys are uh, are up and watching 7 a.m. Eastern time, uh, we're tag teaming all of the candidates this year. In that last year, we just did one on one and that was fine. That was great. But I think with the dynamic of being able to have a conversation, we can avoid something that happened last year when Stetson Bennett joined and randy scott had him isoed up and it's no secret last year that stetson bennett was a 25 year old uh about to win another national championship and he was a heisman finalist and i don't <laughs> listen l in our business we have all been through those moments where we're like oh my gosh I want to freaking walk into traffic after that interaction. <laughs> and that was, that was one of the ones that Randy had last year. And he talks about it too. Basically he, he, he had to, we had to ask Stetson about being 25 and in college and Randy, I don't remember how he delivered it, but Stetson, there was no time delay. There was no audio delay, but Stetson let that question sink in and then was just straight up like, yeah. So that was a weird question. He said that like on air <laughs> and like, and like had to answer it. And then Randy, the professional he is had to do a tiptoe around it. And he ended up saving it. He took it out. He took it out of the mud and, you know, crossed the finish line. But God, it's just one of those moments where I'm like, holy smokes. Yeah, this is live TV and we just have to power through. And again, it was seven o'clock in the morning too. He probably was still up from the night before New York city Heisman uh, ceremony. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we do know he likes to get after it. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing you can do to like when you are in the midst of an interview and you know it's going like totally and completely awry. Mm -hmm. I have one of those, and it happened on Sports Center. Oh no! Oh <laughs> so, no! Do you know who Christopher? It's story time. You know who Christopher Guest is? Okay, should so I, should I say yes? I'm gonna no, you it. don't have to. He's a director. He's a famous director. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. and so and his, you know, movies like Princess Bride. Oh, yeah, all right. Right? Like I love Christopher Guest because Princess uh Bride growing up was like my favorite movie. Like that like had the VHS, like it was my it was my thing. Um, but he does all of those like quirky movies, you know, A Mighty Wind and For Your Consideration, Best in Shows, Fantastic. Well, he was coming on to SportsCenter to promote his new movie at the time. This is back in 2016 called Mascots. And I had just started working at SportsCenter. So they were barely letting me on TV as it is. But I'm I'm doing one of the SportsCenters. I can't remember which one it was. I think it's back when they had an 11 a.m. SportsCenter. And he's going to come on. And they're like, you know, they kind of approached me like, do you want to talk to Christopher Guest? Or I was like, hell yeah. Like, I love his movies. I love Christopher Guest. I love Princess Bride. This is going to be so exciting. I'm so excited. You know, I'm so eager. I just started working there. And Gary, like, he is very dry, uh, his, um, you know, personality, which is cool. Like, I typically dig that personality and I can get along. We can still speak the same language. But he was so dry and snarky. And it just was the most awkward. Like, 
just to give you an example of like one of the things I said to him, because I was like, so you're, you know, this, you made this movie about mascots, like why? And he sort of like, you know, gave some answer about why. And I was like, you're a, you're a big uh, Eagles guy, right? Or, you know, and he's like, I'm not, I mean, I'm not an eagle. I'm a man. I'm not an eagle. I'm not an actual eagle. I'm not like a guy. Take who it easy. easy. It was just like that. I mean, the guessed. whole interview was like that. And I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, I don't know why. So, so, you know, but again, I'm green. So this interview's horrible. We in the interview. Was this live? I, it's live. Yes. Oh. I feel, yeah, it's a live interview. I feel horrible. Cause I'm like, this interview was so bad. Like, what was it me? What did I do wrong? What could I have done better? How could I have approached that? Like, it was so bad. And so I'm beating myself up. I go and change. I get in my car after the show to leave and drive home. I turn on Dan Lebitar, who, of course, was here at the network at the time. And I turn it on. And, like, I hear Dan just, like, mid-sentence being like, you know what? If you don't want to be here, dude, like you do not have to be here. Nice. And it's Christopher Guest on his show or whatever. Oh, oh, he was telling that to Christopher Guest. Yes. Oh. And, you know, oh! Guest's like, no, no, no. Yeah, and Christopher's like, no, 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 it's cool, like whatever. And Dan's like, no, nah, you know what? The interview's over. And when I tell you the validation that I had, like I was like, oh, thank God, because I realized in that moment it wasn't me. Like, Dan Lebitard notoriously has really good interviews. Like people love going on his show and talking to him. And the idea that even he was getting nothing, I was like, oh God, thank God. Because I was, I was mortified. I was like, it was just such a bad interview. I mean, it exists somewhere in the ether. I'm sure we could find it. It just was awkward. He was not, he was not into it. I don't know if someone had to drag him there. It just didn't feel like he wanted to do the interview at all. And it showed. So it was definitely a... It was a learning lesson because I like to believe I can talk my way out of everything. But in that moment, Gary, I was like, oh, sh it was like drowning on live TV. This dude was on a promo tour for a new movie. And I'm like, bro, do you not want to promote this, this movie? movie <laughs> this is the this is the worst PR tour you could have possibly. Damn. I didn't know that he got checked live on air. That that's actually that 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 clip probably exists somewhere. I'm sure it's somewhere. Yeah, I'm oh sure. Oh my god! Internet sleuths, do your thing. Find That's the clip. bad. That's yeah. bad. Yeah. Has that ever happened to you, where you just are literally wallowing on live air, just a bad, and it just keeps getting worse? No. Uh, fortunately, I've not been in that position because I don't think that the bosses trust me with live interviews on it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, nothing like that. Other than, you know, so I, I already talked about like the Dave Christensen thing ahead of the New Mexico Bowl when I was like, hey, what about those cheap, yeah. those, those trick plays? But nothing that I can think of, or at least maybe mentally, I've blacked it out of my mind where I got checked like that. On, oh, I got you. So, on you're air. Just, so you're just perfect. What you're saying is that all of your no. is perfect. No, 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 no. I always am just the one who's like, all right, you clearly you, you don't you don't want to talk to me. It's it's my fault. And then I just it's go through the fault. I go through the motions and I say goodbye to them and I'm just like, I'm gonna block that out of my brain for the rest of my life. So there's probably a handful of times that, that exists. Thankfully, I can't think of anything recently. I go through the motions and then I just say thanks. That kind of sounds like the podcast. <laughs> First of all, L, it's not just a podcast; it's a multi-platform show, fair. and the and heavy emphasis on multi-platform. Soon, yeah, fair. You know what I'm saying? So I am getting requests, um, oh. multiple requests actually, from the audience uh, to get another song ready, uh, and I don't like they're asking for. I don't know if after we did the Bijan Bounce, if they thought there was like a mixtape coming. But I am now at the point where people are approaching me consistently, really, and saying, when's the next great hit coming? Okay. Well, listen, I mean, we can step in the lab. We can step in the studio. I could, yeah. we can, we can throw some, we can throw some stuff down. Yeah. Who's going to be the subject? Drop it in the comment section. Um, if you want us to lace you guys with another, you know, top 40 Banger. hit. Banger. No one ever actually played on top well, 40 radio first of all don't say that because we ended up on a couple spotify raps you saw them that's I nice saw we em. did end up on a couple spotify raps i'll also say this um i think we curse Bijan, so i want you to keep that in mind 
Don't that put that on me. Don't put us, that evil uh, on me. Uh, if you ask us to do a song about someone you love, we could potentially derail their season because as soon as we made a song about Bijan, just, you know, Arthur Smith got going. And it's yeah. been bad ever since. Because y'all don't know, but we did do a song about uh, Zach Wilson and then Trey Lance and Justin Fields, but it's those are just, yet. Uh, those are unreleased tracks. <laughs> So wait, I'll see you next week, Al, or no? Yeah, you'll see me next week. I will be joining okay. you on Monday from a hotel room in Parts Unknown. Oh. And that's all oh. I'll say. All right, Al. We'll see you next week. All right. Thanks Peace. for watching. Hey, tell everybody and subscribe and comment, like, love, yep. hug. I don't think these are any things that you can actually do, but do all that anyway. And L said that if we get to a million subscribers, my name gets to go on the graphic. So. That's true. Do your best, guys. If you can do a million subscribers, Gary, 100 sh You can, It can be the Gary <laughs> Spicy Show with L. Duncan. Hell yeah. Goals. <laughs>